As far as me, um, I think it's been great getting back into shape, basketball shape. You know, I've, I've been out for a while, so it's felt good to uh, be back playing consistently. And how are you guys kind of meshing as a team? There's a lot of new faces on this one. Yeah, surprisingly, for having a lot of new faces, I think everybody really does get along. I mean, we've had a, we, yesterday we took a little bit of time, did a little bit of team bonding. Um, you know, we had a trip over um, players only um, in LA, and it was it was a great experience. So we've we've had a little bit of moments to to come together. A lot of teams are doing that, but still, just the importance of that. Like, how beneficial is it? Well, I mean, if you have trust for somebody off the court, usually it translates onto the court. So. Um, you know, you can never really get too many of those moments together. Coach mentioned earlier today that you're really embracing that kind of six-man role on this team and you really thrive and excel in that in that spot. How do you kind of feel within that space? Well, I mean, I, that was what I played throughout my whole career. Mm -hmm. I mean, five years I spent in Miami, I was coming off the bench. Um, and I, start, I started to love it. I mean, I don't know if you remember going back to last year, the conversations I was having with uh, JC. Uh, you know, just how important that role really is to a team. Um, you know, I mean, you, you can really keep the momentum going or, you know, take it to another level. So I think that's, uh, I've always loved that role. The way Monty described it was you kind of sit there for a couple of minutes and read the game. Can you actually pick up on things in those couple of minutes before you come in and let them play out? Absolutely. Uh, early in my career, I used to get really anxious. So before <laughs> I would go, you know, before we would play out, I'd be so amped up and ready to go. <laughs> And so, you know, I'd make a few just mistakes just based off of being so hyped up. And then uh, coming off the bench, it allowed me to see how the defense was playing, feel the rhythm of the game, see where I could, like, put my, my uh, fingerprints on it. So, I, I mean, that, to your point, yes, that's exactly right. Is that a thing you can pinpoint exactly when you see a young player being anxious or a veteran player who's been picking up on things from the bench? Yeah. Um, you mean, are you saying like... Just like it, seeing other guys out there and you see someone coming off the bench and they're anxious on like your own team or the other team or vice versa where they're clearly like in the right zone. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you see it. If you watch NBA games close enough, you'll see sometimes guys are a little bit jittery and then they get subbed out and subbed back in and they're in a much better flow of the game. You know, I just got mine out early. So. <laughs> yeah, what are you specifically watching when you use those few minutes when you're on the bench? You can watch like pick and roll coverage. You can see, um, you know, what player is getting into what kind of rhythm. Um, so if you get into the game, what what can you do to cut off, you know, this, what maybe we're running a play and you see a read that we didn't get to in the original, um, you know, that original five and you're like, okay, maybe now we ran it a few times with that group, I can hit them with this. So, yeah. What do you think some of the team has improved on from last season going into this season? One, I think the communi communication aspect of it. Um, when we're out there on the floor, you hear voices, you hear people talking, you hear people um, telling you what spots they're in, and that's huge. I mean, especially when you're you're on an island, you feel like you're on an island guarding a you know a Kyrie or a Steph or something like that. When you hear voices behind you, um, you got vocal leaders. Yeah, I mean vocal leaders, but it's I mean everybody's the lead. you know everybody's doing their part. It's not one guy talking and everybody else just kind of like doing. It's everybody is talking out their position. And it just gives you so much more confidence, you know, for the group. This is a team that's gone through a number of coaching changes over the years. Uh, you came from a place in Miami that had stability and kind of the organizational culture that everybody talks about. What can you do? What can you bring from that? Or what did you learn from that that you can help establish that foundation of an identity here? Well, I mean, I think Monty, has been, he's been through the fire. You know, he's been through a lot of different situations. And so, I, I mean, I believe that the stability aspect has been found. You know, when you find somebody who's going to hold people accountable on down the line. It really doesn't matter who it is or, or what, you know, aspect of the game or outside the game it actually is. That's, that's somebody that's going to be able to have their, you know, fingerprints on the organization for a long time. Do you recall, like, with some past teams, when, like, you realize that it clicks? Or, like, what does that look like when you're like, wow, we are really cohesive? Well, you, I mean, you can see it a lot of different ways. I remember when, um, it was like three years ago, I was on a team that was 11 and 30 to start the year, and we flipped it around and went 30 and 11. But during that 11 and 30, everybody else is just sitting here, you, have, you know, it's not a good team, you got no trade, you gave too many people this, you gave too many people that. But you could tell every day we were getting better. And you could tell, you know, by the way we were putting it together in games, we just really couldn't get over that hump. But, you know, during that time, we realized that nobody was coming to bail us out. You know, nobody was coming to the rescue. It was the guys in the room. And once we figured that out and really started gelling, um, I mean, 
and that, that was a really good team. That ended up being a really, really good team. And so you can you can just tell by the way guys start to trust each other by making extra passes, um, you know, guys talking in the huddles, you know, it's not quiet. Um, you know, that's actually when you talk about something from last year, I remember sometimes going to the huddle and it was quiet, dead quiet. And then now you get here and it's like, okay, we made a mistake, but what was the mistake? Why do we make that mistake? What do we do? What do we do to, to fix it? No, nah, I'm not going to hold it against you. You know what I mean? So. Um, I, I think that's when you start to find it. So yeah, you start to, you, you know it when you see it. In those you feel it, yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean? You can talk it, you can try to talk it into existence, mm -hmm. but you you start to feel it though. So I, heard, I, knew, I heard Josh Richardson describe the G League, you guys call it the jungle, is mm -hmm, that right? Mm -hmm. Have you been talking to Jalen about the jungle and what could it entail? Because he's very likely going to spend a little bit of time there at least. You know what, I haven't, um, I haven't, but um, you know, that's probably something I'm going to have to do um, with it, with anybody who goes down there. I don't, I, you know, right now I don't know who's going to be down there and who's going to be up, what the situation is. But, um, yeah, we did call it the jungle just because there's a lot of guys that get lost in the shuffle over there. There's a lot of guys that feel like when they go down to the D-League, like you're being punished or you're, you know, you're not good. Really, you're just going down there to get better. You know what I mean? Like you get to play basketball. You get to work on things that – you you would you you wouldn't necessarily get to on the main roster. You get to actually get game reps, and so um, you know if you have a bad attitude about that, then it's tough. It's gonna be tough. Is that you know, the main say. thing you tell guys in that conversation? Like, look, you're not just running through practice and sitting there. You're gonna get to play. I mean, you should. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can say it, but I mean, <laughs> I feel like you should see it. Like, you know, what I mean, yeah. like, it, you could come up and you see, you see guys sitting in suits and ties on the end of the bench. You see some guys who sit there and four or five, six, seven games in a row and don't get in. I mean, I'd much rather get my reps and play, and then that way, when I maybe do get called up or do get my chance, it's I haven't been sitting on the bench and just going, you know, in practice. I've actually had game reps. On the in the same system, we're gonna run. They're probably gonna run the exact same system here as they do up there. I know it's kind of early, but have you gotten a feel yet if you're gonna spend more time at the one or the two this year coming off the bench? No, I haven't. Um, I think that I've, I've played the one in practice, played the two in practice. Um, I feel comfortable playing both. You know, I've spent. I think that time being a starter last year mm -hmm. at the point specifically uh, really helped. So. Um, you know, I feel comfortable either way. And at the end of the day, it, it just gets down to trying to, to, to improve off of 19 wins, you know? So um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put my ego in the way and, and try and say, oh, I should be playing this or I should be playing that. You know, wherever they put me is where I'm gonna make my mark on the game. How did playing the one last year, like when you sort of look back on that experience, where did that most, what did you most learn from that that you can now uh, apply this, this year? It was tough. Yeah. I'm not, I won't even lie to you. That, that first uh, first couple games was challenging. One, just because I love to run the wing. You know, that's one that's one thing I've done since I've been a little kid. And uh, you have to come back into the ball. You got to make sure you got to know where everybody's <laughs> supposed to be at. Um, you know, usually when the play breaks down, that's where they're looking. So uh, it taught me a lot of accountability more than anything. Um, understanding not just my position, but multiple positions on the floor, multiple leads, out of plays. Uh, and doing it for a whole game. You know, I had spurts, but I would do it for five, six, seven possessions. But doing it for a whole game, yeah, like, it, it's a tough position. I didn't realize I have a lot more respect for it now. But it kind of made you grow. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. What do you have done this off season to try and help with that 19 win from last season? Uh, so me specifically, or, or try and help it. So me specifically has been trying to get my body right. You know, I've, I feel like I've had a couple uh, seasons cut short because of injury. And so I really want to be one of those guys that's dependable every night. I can, I, you can put it on the books. Um, you know, my performance every night. You got that bulldog mentality. I see you have your, all your teeth back in your mouth. What makes you kind of replace <laughs> your teeth after that? I thought we, I did not think I was going to get a tooth question after, <laughs> after I got them all put back in. Um, you know, I really like the, Studio B, right? Studio B Smile, shout out to them. They did a great job. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, the thing is, is um, I think I've been, uh, I've been somebody who really loved the game since I was a little kid. And I never wanted somebody that one, tell me what I could and couldn't do or one try and take it away from me. And so I always tried from the time I was a little kid to put in maximum effort because I never wanted, you know, I never wanted to end. 
And I never want them there to be a time when I can't go play basketball at the highest level. And so, uh, you know, I try to take that with me every day. Does that make Carolina step back a little bit or push even more? Oh no, I'm pushing. Yeah, I'm pushing. I'll go. I'll go till I fall apart. You know what I mean? Not, now they got modern medicine and everything like that, so I should be. I should be good. I'll probably walk till I'm like sixty, and then you know, I'll have some beautiful lady push me around for the rest of my life. <laughs> Ideal. <I love> <laughs>